marriage attack. Yes, I am celebrating being on YouTube for over a year, um, a year and one month, I think. So, well, congratulations to me. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about sexuality and the ego. Sexuality is a huge part of my ego. It's a huge part of what I'm, what I'm identifying with here on YouTube. And it's something that I'm trying to build my brand on. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to be facing a lot of ego stuff with my sexuality over the years, claiming my sexuality more and more, understanding myself more and more. I was able to see these things quite clearly. So yes, that is what we're talking about today. I'm not gonna ramble, I have a rambling problem. First, I wanna give like some general terms so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and these terms you're not gonna find in a dictionary, they're just my understanding of them. So I think a sexuality is um, your gender, your sexual orientation, and basically everything that turns you on everything that excites you, everything that you desire. I think all of that stuff is like under the umbrella of your sexuality or come together to make your sexuality. The ego is a kind of skin for our spirit. It's a way for our minds to understand our reality as this is what enca encapsulates me. This is what is me and this is what everything else is. I just read, um, my journal pages from seven years ago. This is a ramble, I'm going off on a tangent, but it's, it's definitely related. Seven years ago, uh, I had a manifestation journal and I wrote down just everything that I was feeling and I couldn't believe how wise I was. So while I could go um, inward and, and feel into myself, as soon as I was in another person's presence, I my sense of self was completely in the hands of the other person and it made life so miserable. So these past seven years, looking back at it, it's like, okay, well, I, I, I've always had this temple where I um, am always journaling inside of and just creating a safe space. Uh, this is, yeah, this is a little backstory um, on uh, Cassandra's temple. I've always created this kind of safe space for me to feel and process my feelings. And it it's this source of wisdom that I've been drawing from for as long as I can remember, this this safe space that I've been providing for myself has been the, the greatest uh, catalyst in my spiritual, overall, personal development. Um, and what's changed in the last seven years is that I've learned to build up an ego where I can separate myself from what other people are thinking or what I feel other people are feeling. Yeah, I've done so much work on building up that sense of self that can be like, if that's what you think about me, that is your experience. I have a strong enough sense of self to believe what I think about myself and to have more convictions of that and not being so mean. I've been so mean to myself in the past, like incredibly mean and always always throwing my sense of self in other people's hands. Ooh, I've come a long way. And this is kind of a side note, but I just want to give a little context for how terrible I was to myself. My dog just died. I said this in my last video. Um, I had him for 16 years and I've been feeling grief. Uh, the reason why I'm bringing that up is because on that first day of grief. It was the worst and it was so painful. And while I was in that feeling, I was like, I've, I've had him since I was 10. I, I've been dreading this moment since I got him. And it was so much worse than I ever could have imagined. But it still was not as painful as the shit that I did to myself. It didn't sting like that. It was a it was a flooding, but it was a flooding of something that was so pure and so beautiful. I don't like the word pure. It was it was so natural. It was so like part of the the fabric of humanity that it I just blossomed into this new person. Um, Coming back to all of the ego stuff, um, that rhetoric about ego 
ego is like is bad you should try to um, ego death is to be sought after and all of that um, I think you can go to places where you kind of come out of the skin of your ego I definitely believe that in waking life there's always going to be some layer of ego and I see it as this layer of skin that constantly needs to shed just like a snake and I think the whole snake um, uh, snake ego evil kind of symbolism I think to me means um, really the skin of the snake and how it's constantly, it constantly needs to shed. There are things that you identify with that you need to stop identifying with, and there are things that would make you feel so much better and so much stronger in your sense of self um, that, that you need to reach for. So it's like growing that new skin and letting the old skin die, and growing that new skin and letting that, that skin die. Um, and the ego goes through this process over a lifetime. So when you feel like uncomfortable in your own skin or, um, or uncomfortable being around other people and feeling like you completely lose your sense of self, um, it's probably because you need to shed some more ego. You need to stop identifying with things that you've been identifying with. And what is so empowering about all of this is that you can shed and let go of things that you no longer need to um, identify with that no longer serve you by choice. It's just a matter of practice. Um, and the fact that we have this ability to change who we think we are by changing what we identify with, um, you can, yeah, you can do a lot. You can do a whole lot. Um, now, for how sexuality plays into this whole ego stuff is that because the ego is always trying to identify um, with things, uh, always trying to understand itself or have some security in this is who I am, that could be things that make you feel bad, that could be things that make you feel good. A lot of times people want to feel good about themselves. They want to feel that, that ego gratification of saying, yes, I am attractive. Um, yes, I am... I have cause to feel good. I have cause to feel safe. So a lot of times the way it works um, is when we see somebody who we think is attractive be attracted to us, that signals to the ego, oh, I'm attractive. That makes me feel good. And we all, because we have a sexuality, because there is a, a magnetism that is coming off of you, the stronger that magnetism feels, the better you feel about yourself. And something that I want to add here, because it, it's it's really annoying to, to see people perpetuate this myth that the more feminine you are, the more attractive you are, or the more masculine you are, the more attractive you are. Um, the truth is we all have a balance of both, and the better you understand that balance and claim that balance, the more attractive you are. It doesn't matter if you're on either side or in the middle, as long as that is where you naturally sit, as long as you are being honest with yourself about what your sexuality is, claiming it and embodying it, that's what's, that's what's gonna be attractive. It really doesn't matter how people express that sexuality. Um, it could be in a masculine or feminine way or any combination of the two. But as long as you know yourself and you're grounded in who you are, that is what is so, that's, that's what's attractive. I, I totally fell into that trap. I wanted to be so feminine. I was so afraid of being masculine. And now like with all of, all of these influencers who are educating people about transness, non-binaryness, I'm not good with words, um, <laughs> about the trans community about um, the non-binary community and how people are speaking up and expressing themselves and allowing themselves to be seen, we all can be influenced by that and understand who we are. And I feel like the reason why people are so transphobic or homophobic is because 
when somebody is being truthful, if somebody is being honest in their sexuality, it's, it's going to put you more in your sexuality. And if you're not comfortable with somebody's, somebody saying their truth and you've been lying to yourself, that's going to make you feel insecure. And a lot of people like to point fingers when they're feeling insecure. Um, so yeah, like, now I'm like, I have both masculine and feminine traits. Uh, I have a lot of muscle. I have long hair. I, I have like a, you can see my Adam's apple a little bit. Sometimes my waist is thick and like I'm more triangular shaped. Whatever, what I, those are just like cultural, you know, binary bullshit anyway. Um, but if you look at anybody, you're gonna see traits of both and that's just, uh, that it, it is what it is. You know what I mean? So yeah, I just wanted to bust that myth really quick. So I'm speaking a lot from personal experience. I am out here on YouTube referring to myself as a sacred prostitute archetype. I am posting thirst traps on Instagram. I have a picture of myself nude, you know, blurred out all the, the parts out somewhere on Instagram. And so yeah, my sexuality is, is a huge part of my ego. It's a huge part of what I identify with. Um, it feels like my mission. It feels like, uh, what I, what I'm meant to do. Um, it feels good to claim my sexuality. It feels good to claim my sexuality publicly because it had been so hidden. It had, it had been like something so terrible about myself and secretly loved to like, I'm outwardly loving my sexuality and outwardly expressing like, this is, this is who I am. It's a very vulnerable thing for me. And I, I sometimes post thirst traps and then delete them because I'm like, oh no, people think I'm desperate. People think like they, they probably think I'm uh, looking for men's attention and all of that. And, and I get really self-conscious <laughs> and I take it down because I'm like, oh, what are people thinking of me? They, they, they think I'm so stupid for posting um, what I'm posting. And even referring to them as thirst traps is I think really um, limiting. I don't, I'm not doing it for that purpose. Um, I'm doing it because I love ex being public about my expression of self because it feels like people are getting a real piece of me. And I like that feeling. I don't like feeling like I'm hiding from the world. Uh, I'm done hiding. I like, I, this is, this is all beautiful. I want to share it with you guys. Um, and it's, t oh God, I've come such a long way to have said that and not really even think twice about it. Fuck. That's crazy. I'm growing so much and it's, it's a lifelong process and it's hard to wrap my head around. But, um, I want to share myself. I'm like, I'm finally getting to a solid sense of self where I'm like, it is what it is. You like it. I like it. If you don't like it, why are you here? Our sexualities are absolute. And I think it's, it, it could be a lifelong process of getting to know more of your sexuality. And some people don't get there for a really long time. They don't admit what their sexuality is because they're afraid of shedding that old identification of who they thought they were to really be themselves. Um, that is a huge and humbling process to go through, uh, having to re-identify with, with things. Um, everyone loves the feeling of sitting in the honest truth of what their sexuality is. My sexuality, part of what I have to claim is I'm attracted to everyone and everyone is attracted to me. That being said, I know that sounds really uh, vain, but it's not something that I expect to be reflected in the world like you think it would be reflected into the world. Oh, like, Cassie, I'm so attracted to you. Blah, blah, blah. It's not like that. I think there, 
is an energetic thing about magnetism and attract attractiveness that um, is totally spiritual. It's totally not about what's on the outside. You can work with what you got and still be very sexy. You don't have to look like um, anybody who is conventionally attractive and say, oh, well, they're obviously going to be the most attractive. It's just not true. You embodying who you really are, your healthy self, your healthiest version of yourself, mentally, physically, whatever it is, that is what's going to make you feel attractive. And if you want to go through that process of like strengthening your sense of self, re-identifying so that you can be healthy, so that you can feel good, you have that choice. Um, but don't go believing these myths that you have to be ultra feminine or ultra masculine in order to be seen as attractive. Just be honest with yourself about what you like, who you like, um, and what you feel like inside. Honesty and honesty, I think, is what creates confidence. Yeah, I mean, you can't you can't build confidence on something on lies, you know. So yeah, I hope that like cleared something up. I'm not super confident that I talked about what I said I was going to talk about, but I think I gave some really great nuggets in there. Um, so, ha, yes, okay, now I can do my little spiel. Um, no, wait, don't, don't click off, don't click off. You're going to want to hear this. Um, what was I going to say? I want, I want my temple to be someplace where people can feel safe and talk about whatever they want. I want to build a community where your feelings are loved and accepted, whatever they are. Um, don't be mean, you know, don't be mean to yourself, don't be, be mean to anybody else, uh, but yeah, thank you for stopping by my temple and thank you for allowing me into yours. Uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye!